Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Well, once I finally have the secret formula, the post-apocalyptic global empire of destruction that results will be mine. That sounds pretty villainous. Okay, you'll move on to the test phase. Good old SpongeBob season 13. This season's still airing, but honestly, guys, I think season 13 has been really good. And one of the better episodes has been Captain Pipsqueak. This episode was filled to the brim with so many Easter eggs. I'm gonna get into the mistakes, but take a look at this one clip and comment all the characters you can recognize. Do you ever sign in and wait your turn? Get out of the car, fellas! Take all your money and put it in the bag! No, Mr. Bob, I expect you to fry! <laughs> I am the strength! I'm the strength! <laughs> I want to see those comments. Like I said, comment every character you could recognize in what episode they're from. It's wild. But let's get into the good stuff, what you clicked on the video for, and that is some spicy, crazy, wild mistakes. Roll the footage. So take a look at this footage of Plankton's classic computer wife, Karen. Imagine having a computer wife like Plankton. You are desperate, bro. Like what? Then again though, having a computer wife would actually be kind of nice because anyways, Karen's hands are always blue. Take a look at this footage. Happy birthday. Nice to see you again, Grandma Plankton. But I guess the animators forgot about this one. As in Captain Pipsqueak, look, Karen's hands are colored as gray for some reason. Hey, maybe Plankton changed up her design, but I don't know. I think that was just a mistake. I think the animators forgot that they're always blue. But here's mistake number two. You might as well give us the secret formula now, Krabs. Ah, what, you nerds going to a comic convention? This one isn't that big of a deal because, I mean, it is, like, a cartoon, but as you can see here, when Man Ray enters the Krusty Krab, he blasts a massive hole above the entrance. Right here, you can see it. But once they're in the restaurant in later scenes, the hole that he literally made seconds prior is just gone. The animators drew it here, but then forgot to draw it during this scene, so yeah. Another mistake, let's keep it going, guys, and head over to another scene. Season 13 episode, let's go. How you like me now? I like you this much. We're gonna be talking about this season six episode, Sand Castles in the Sand. Keep those eyes peeled, roll the footage. <laughs> We been abandoned! No! No! Oh, no one's ever gonna find us out here! Oh, 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 oh. Little help, brah. Look, Patrick, we made it! Hey, best friend. So as you just seen, SpongeBob and Patrick get kicked off of the bus beside this road. I want you guys to remember this road right here. I'm circling it, I'm zooming in. There is a road right here, all right? Then SpongeBob says, no one is ever going to find us out here. And now this road has just disappeared, like it's gone. <laughs> the road is literally just gone. It was there in this shot, now it's gone. I don't know what happened, but talk about some cartoon logic for sure. Again, I'm always gonna say guys, this is a cartoon. So I know why this happened, but it was some weird continuity. And every time I watch this episode now, I notice it and it looks really rough. But anyways, let's move over to another episode. Let's go. What is it about the third Wednesday of every month that makes Squidward so happy? <sighs> this almost makes the other 353 days worth living for. Let's head over to Cephalopod Lodge, an episode from season six that I personally really like. Here's some funny clips from the episode. We're gonna get into the mistakes, but I don't want you guys to miss these clips. The episode is hilarious. <laughs> Spongebob, Patrick, did you follow me here? 
No outsiders have witnessed this sacred initiation. You have desecrated the sanctity of this lodge. They kicked me out of the cephalopod lodge. Do we get to join the lodge? Like I said, it's funny, right? Give the episode a chance, but baby, it is mistake time. Here's this episode's mistake. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Patrick and I have come up with a secret handshake. Everybody knows patty cake. Not the way we do it. We don't use our pinkies. Okay, this one isn't that big of a deal, but SpongeBob and Patrick's secret handshake has them play patty cake without using their pinkies, right? This is something that they specify in the episode, as you could hear in the clips we just played. And remember this, guys, because it's important. When they play patty cake, they don't use their pinkies. Remember this. However, when they eventually demonstrate the handshake to Squidward in this scene, take a look. Yeah, as you've seen, they clearly used their pinkies, like their pinkies touch each other, despite the fact that they said they play patty cake without using their pinkies. So, a bit of a mistake here, it's not that big of a deal, but let's head over to our last episode of today, which has a fairly bad mistake. Let's keep it moving. If you understand animation in SpongeBob, this is definitely a mistake. And there's more. This episode has another mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. Oh my goodness! I almost forgot to flip that one. <laughs> Squidward, why'd you make that weird noise? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Squidward, that giant Krabby Patty is on a rampage. A bell and ah! It's a crab What? <laughs> And just what is it you two think you're doing? We're getting out of here. You can't just leave. Do you have a better idea? Stay and work. Now, this one is admittedly kind of a nitpick because this is a cartoon, right? But it's still a continuity error. In the kitchen, as you can see, this monster Krabby Patty eats SpongeBob's left shoe and his sock. But when SpongeBob and Squidward try to exit the restaurant, his sock and shoe reappear for no apparent reason and remain like that for the rest of the episode. Again, it makes sense because it's a cartoon, right? But this is still a bit of a weird continuity error. Maybe SpongeBob has an extra shoe and sock in his work locker. I don't know. But let's move over to episode number three, which has even more crazy mistakes. As you guys know, our girl Sandy over here is quite the daredevil. Like this girl loves extreme sports. Like she is obsessed. Well, this is a major part of the plot in the episode Squirrel Record. Here, take a look at some of these clips. It's really funny. And then we'll get into the mistakes. It's all right here in the Guinness, a ripply enormous book of curiosities, oddities, and world records. I swear by the power of Texas, I'm going to break all the records in this here book. Most walnuts in mouth. F on four. Hello. Next. Largest rubber band ball. Woohoo. Next. Spiciest Chili gargle. <laughs> Ugh, got it. You okay? This girl, Sandy, is like obsessed with breaking a new record. But guys, you know what I'm obsessed with? Exposing animation mistakes and continuity errors in SpongeBob. And here's the first one in this episode. Keep those eyes peeled. Oh my, it's time to go home. Squidward, what are you still doing here? Ah! What am I gonna do with you? I can't throw you away. I know just what you need. A Krabby Patty! <laughs> 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 
This one might not seem like a mistake at first, but listen closely, Grapple Gang. When SpongeBob puts a patty in his wallet, we get to see the inside of his wallet and we can see his milkshake license. Now I want a milkshake, guys. Comment down below what your favorite milkshake flavor is. But anyways, when he puts the patty in his wallet, we can see his milkshake license. It's right here. But in the next scene, when SpongeBob takes out the patty after Sandy had raw chum, the inside completely changes. Where is his milkshake license? Now it's replaced with a picture of a cowboy saying yeehaw, which hey, I'm not going to complain about. It's a funny picture. But at first he had this in his wallet and then literally seconds later it's changed. So I don't think SpongeBob randomly organized his wallet in the middle of a SpongeBob episode. So this was a continuity error. Oh, Sheldon, you're so romantic. It's all about yeah. you today, Karen. Oh, kiss me, Pipsqueak. I mean, Ray Ray. <laughs> Grandma! I told you never to call me on this screen! Our next set of mistakes can be found in the episode of Grandmums the World, and they all take place near the ending of the episode. Take a look at this. I'm not sharing this formula with you! Yeah, with Grandma! <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you toss the peasants a little something? <laughs> so, at the very ending of the episode, when all of these bikini bottomites are like bowing down to Lily, Squidward's grandmother, well, look at this. Red numbers appear on the screen for about a second. This one's kind of similar to the last mistake we just covered, as it was clearly done by the animators. They forgot to remove these red numbers. It was probably a part of the animation process. But it's still a mistake, and it looks really bad. But that's not it for this episode. In that same scene, um, Mr. Krabs's eyelashes are missing. It's not that big of a deal, but I don't know how you forgot to draw Mr. Krabs' eyelashes. He always has them. Normally he looks like this, but in this one shot, they're missing. And guys, there's more. So take a look at these shots of the Krusty Krab. As you can see, there's the Galley Grub menu. It's always there. It's been there since the first season of the show. And as you can see, Krabby Patty on the menu is always spelt as K-R-A-B-B-Y-P-A-T-T-Y. Remember this, as in Grandmom's The World, during this one scene, um, Krabby Patty is misspelled as P-A-T-T-I-E. So a little bit of a spelling mistake there, huh? Not that big of a deal, but I mean, it is a mistake. That's not how Patty's supposed to be spelled. But anyways, let's keep it moving and head to our next episode. SpongeBob, come in here. <laughs> or should I say Robot Bob Sponge Chef Pants? I put the brain in the robot, you know. You know, Plankton is a very evil guy, but have you ever wondered what would happen if SpongeBob went to work at the Chum Bucket? Well, this is exactly what happens in Welcome to the Chum Bucket, a season two banger. Here are some clips from the episode. It's really funny. One Krabby Patty coming up, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> oh, Mr. Krabs. Is there anything that old Skin Flint Krabs wouldn't let you have? Well, wow. <laughs> So now, do you have everything you need to make some Krabby Patties? Well... You ready to make some patties? Wait till I finish my ice cream! Here's the thing, guys. As you know, when you take a bath, you don't wear clothes, right? You take off all of your clothes, okay? Well, when SpongeBob is seen bathing in the Krusty Krab kitchen during this scene while eating an ice cream, we can see his sleeves, which is totally a mistake. SpongeBob is in the bath. He shouldn't have his sleeves on his shirt. That just makes no sense. This was like a major mistake. It's like the animators forgot to take off the sleeves when they drew this one. So yeah, a pretty bad mistake. But let's keep it moving and head over to another mistake in this episode. The sign says kitchen, but my heart says jail. This grill is not a home. This is not the stove I know. This kitchen's not the same without you. It's just a grill. It's just a greasy spoon without you. 
Now for this one to really make sense, I want you guys to take a look at this shot of the chum bucket, okay? So for one, as you can see, the chum bucket writing is red, okay? It's red. And the chum bucket writing is on the front of the restaurant directly above the door. Right here, I'm circling it, okay? Now, in this one shot of Welcome to the Chum Bucket during the song section, it's a really good song, by the way, the chum bucket logo is on the side of the building instead of being above the doors where it usually sits. Furthermore, the text is also blue. Now, this might be due to it being nighttime, but it being dark out wouldn't change the entire color of like the text. It would still be red like it's supposed to be in this shot, but here it's blue and the text is on the wrong side. So this was just a weird one. I wouldn't call this a mistake. The animators probably just did this to make their lives easier, but that's not how it's supposed to look, guys. So yeah. Stay tuned though, guys. I got our last episode next, and this one has some wild mistakes. You've never seen these ones before. The episode Friendiversary, which has a ton of mistakes in it. I'm surprised this episode just aired and it's filled to the brim with mistakes. Let's see if you guys can catch them. <laughs> Be friend of Happy friend of Squidward! It's all here in my Squidward memory book. What? Here's us at camp. Here's when I moved in right next door. Look at you, just like an angel. So this first one is a good old fashioned animation error where you can see it's a blatant mistake with the animation. I don't know what exactly happened here, but when SpongeBob shows his memory book to Squidward, um, Squidward's neck is to weaken because it's completely disconnected from his body. To be fair, it's only for a few seconds, but I mean, I'm zooming in on this. Look at that, man. How did that even happen? Yeah, poor Squidward, man. His neck is just, is not, is not how it's supposed to be, but let's keep it moving. There's more mistakes in this episode. Here's mistake number two. I so this one is really bad, and honestly, it's one of the worst mistakes I've seen in season 13. So as you can see here, this is how the interior of Squidward's house looks, okay? He has like green wallpaper on his walls, and his floor is pink. We've seen it in so many episodes. Just take a look at this shot from Slimy Dancing. Well, I don't know what the animators were up to in this episode, because take a look at this shot from Friendiversary, as when SpongeBob's going into his house, his house's interior is Squidward house. It's funny because Squidward's door is open in this shot too and you can literally see his interior and it's like they just copied and pasted it to Spongebob's. This is how Spongebob's interior is supposed to look. You can even just see it from the Wikipedia page. But in this episode, they were feeling extremely lazy and just gave Spongebob the wrong inside to his house. Like, I'm honestly flabbergasted about this one. I don't even use that word often, guys. Flabbergasted. But your boy is flabbergasted. And believe it or not, that ain't even it. This episode has more mistakes. Here's the third one. Remember the first time I startled you into this trash can? I go away! Go away! <laughs> Bring that patty here now. Okay, Squidward. Here I come. I'm coming over. I'm bringing the patty to you. Right now. Ah. Uh. SpongeBob. So that last episode was from SpongeBob season 13, the most recent season of SpongeBob. So let's go back in time to old SpongeBob, the Steven Hillenburg era, and talk about some mistakes in the episode, Your Shoes Untied. I love this episode. It's a good one. Any classic SpongeBob I love. Anyways, though, here's the first mistake. Roll the footage. This is the worst service we've ever had. We're going to the chum bucket. Wait, don't go. <laughs> Oh yeah, we are definitely out of here. Yes! Wait! Wait! Let's go! What's the meaning of this, Mr. Squidward? It's SpongeBob's fault. This one is really, really funny. So guys, when the customers start to leave the Krusty Krab in this scene, this character right here, known as Incidental 67, wears a pair of pants that are similar to SpongeBob's, okay? You can see them right here. They're kind of fresh. Look at this guy, Jack in SpongeBob style, stealing his drip. Here's the problem though, guys. When the customers leave, this Incidental's pants just disappear. Where are they? At first, he's wearing in these pants right here, but then in this scene, they're just gone. And again, just like Incidental F9, I highly doubt he took off his pants in the middle of the crusty crap. The burgers ain't that good, guys. But anyways, let's keep it moving and head over to another mistake in this episode. This one's pretty bad. 
Just stopped. Now, any hardcore SpongeBob fan like myself knows that this character right here is Old Man Walker. And I mean, it's in his name. He's old. He's an old man. I love the guy, but he's a senior citizen. But I guess whoever made this episode kind of forgot about this. Because when Old Man Walker says what's the holdup to Squidward, he talks in a young man's voice. Here's a clip right here showing his old voice again from another episode. Oh, pardon me, young lady. What a fuck. <laughs> I hope I don't miss again. He's old, right? As you just heard. Well, listen to his voice again in this episode. What's the hold up? Dude is like a young man again somehow. I don't know how this happened, but this was definitely a mistake, guys. This one's kind of bad, but hey, that's not it for today's video. Let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. Let's go. Howdy, Bubble Bass. I reckon you're hankering for a delicious new dish. <laughs> Ooh, such smoky stupidity. Sandy Cheeks has come up with a lot of revolutionary ideas for the Krusty Krab. For example, the episode where she comes up with a growth hormone that makes Krabby Patties bigger. But season 13's Hot Crust Nuts is definitely her biggest endeavor yet, with her making these nuts that do this. Here, take a look for yourself. I brought a little something of my own from home, from home, from home, from home. <laughs> Sandy's smoking barbecue nuts. There is no outside food allowed at the Krusty Krab. <laughs> Come on, SpongeBob. I won't spill the nuts if you won't. <laughs> Try one. Mm. <laughs> 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 Enough! I'm confiscating these unauthorized acres! <laughs> Alright! Sandy, you're hired! Now this episode has two mistakes in total. Here's the first one, it's very easy to miss, and it has to do with the chum bucket. <laughs> you love the new look? I'm just here for the nuts. So take a look at these clips. The Krusty Krab and Chum Bucket are supposed to be directly across from one another. It's been seen like this in so many episodes, guys, but in some of these scenes from Hot Cross to Nuts, um, the Chum Bucket just isn't there. Even the path to the Chum Bucket is missing at times. It's just like the Chum Bucket just does not exist in this episode, which is totally a mistake. But guys, this next mistake is way worse. This one is really, really really bad. Huh? Hey, everybody! This table's got that smoky Texas tag! Uh, <laughs> oh, stop it! Be <laughs> restaurant! No! So when all the incidentals start freaking out in eating the Krusty Krab, I want you to watch this in slow motion from the outside because the animators were really lazy with all of these incidentals. For one, they have no pupils. They have like literal just blank white eyes. Same thing with their mouth and multiple of them are duplicated. Like look at how many times the one with a blue shirt and a cowboy hat is shown. The main thing here is just they were very lazily drawn for this one section. And I get it. It's a quick section where they just eat the crusty crab, but yeah, there should have been some more effort put into these incidentals. This isn't season one, it's season 13. Oh, these are very nice, but I don't have a driver's license. No license, huh? Well, you don't need a license to drive a self-driving boat. <laughs> Settle down, Mr. Squarepants. Wow, you talk. How'd you know my name? I can feel your square pants on my seat. This next mistake is an interesting one and can be found in the episode Drive Happy. Roll the footage. What's wrong, Coop? I'm getting wet. Here, take this. I want to be inside. Like inside? <laughs> All right, Coop, come on in. 
did you catch the mistake? Well, whoever wrote this episode, or I guess animated it, needs to go back and educate themselves on the world of SpongeBob, most notably Conch Street. As in this shot, as you can see right here, SpongeBob's iconic pineapple home has a garage in the back of it, all right? You know, a garage where you'd park a car. But here's the issue. At one point in Drive Happy, SpongeBob saws a hole at the front of his house so that Coop, his car, can enter and seek shelter. This was completely unnecessary, SpongeBob, because, you know, you have a garage. So, like, why would you do that? Well, it's not SpongeBob's fault, it's the animator's fault. They forgot about this garage, as you can see in this shot, and then made SpongeBob do this in this episode. What a weird mistake. This one's so weird that I just want to move on from it to our next episode. Let's keep it going. If SpongeBob does not pass this one, it means another whole year of boarding school! Aww. What happened? Oh, nothing, SpongeBob. You just struck another pedestrian. Minus 20 more points. Next up is the episode No Free Rides. This is a classic episode, and just to refresh your memory, here are some clips from the episode. Here's your license. My license? Ta-da! A brand new Boatmobile! What have I done? Everyone will know that I let him slide through school. I've got to end this thing before it begins. I hope I still remember how to do this. Arg! I'd never let you have this boat. Not even if you were... Oh! Mrs. Puff? What a classic episode, am I right? I love this one. Now, what I missed when I was a kid, though, were the mistakes in this episode. Here's the first mistake. Keep those eyes peeled. <laughs> Did you catch it? Now, this is more of an animation error, and it's not that big of a deal because it's a cartoon. But when SpongeBob gets graded by cheese graters, that would be a terrible way to die. His eyes come out of the cheese graters several times. This would only happen one time. His eyes would go through once, they'd be shredded. It's not like SpongeBob has multiple pairs of eyes. So this was a bit of a weird mistake on the animator's end. And that's not it for this episode. I have another one. Now just stay in bed. And no going near the boat. Hi, Bodie. Oh, Bodie, you're cold. Take my socks. Oh, Bodie. You're the best boat in the deep blue sea. So, as you just seen, SpongeBob gives the boat his socks, all right? He takes them off and gives them to the boat. But then, how does he have them back on as soon as he hops into the boat's side? Again, this is just cartoon logic, right? It's fine, but it's still a bit of a funny continuity error. It's like the dude literally just gave him his socks. Now, somehow, he magically has them back on. Whatever. <laughs> Three mistakes in one episode, and this is a new episode. You'd think the animators would know about the mistakes, but anyways, this one isn't as bad. But normally, as you can see in this shot, Patrick's house has a path. But in Friend of Ursary, the path to Patrick's house appears and disappears multiple times throughout the episode. It's really weird. In this shot, it's here. and this shot, it's not there. So I don't know what was going on with this one, but the animators made a lot of mistakes, guys. But let's keep it moving and head over to another new season 13 episode. Yeah. Let's keep it moving. First up is the season eight episode, Bubble Troubles. This episode is all about SpongeBob and Patrick being idiots like normal. By the way, never call anybody an idiot, kids, but SpongeBob and Patrick are not very smart in this episode because they ruin Sandy's oxygen supply. As you guys know, Sandy's a squirrel, she isn't a fish, so she needs air. And in this episode, SpongeBob and Patrick really mess up. Here are some clips of what happens. No spice. Mm. Hot sauce. Sandy, Sandy, check out these new spicy bubbles that Patrick invented. Well, I'd love to try out your newfangled bubbles, Patrick, but I've got to fix these airlines to my tree dome. <laughs> Ah! 
SpongeBob, Patrick, you guys could have like killed Sandy. Like she even starts passing out at one point because she's feeling woozy due to not having enough air. Crazy plot. But the mistake in this episode is really interesting. It shows that the writer of this episode needs to go back and watch old SpongeBob. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Luckily, I have just enough air in my submarine to get to the surface and refill my air tanks. Phew, thank goodness. Allow me to get the door. Even I knew that was dumb. How's Sandy doing back there? Not sure. Let me check. Oh. Hey there, Patty Pat, 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 Patrick. Careful where you're breathing. She seems fine. Hold on just a little longer, Sandy. We're almost there. I can see sunlight. This one's bad, so be prepared, okay? In the episode, there's a point where Sandy thinks she needs to drive her submarine to the surface to get more air, right? Because they're a bikini bottom, it's underwater. Sandy's a squirrel, so she needs air from the surface. But here's the thing. Back in the classic, iconic episode, Pressure, it's confirmed that Sandy can quite literally just walk up to the shore. As you can see right now in these clips, she literally walks to the shore. So whoever wrote this episode, Bubble Troubles, needs to go back and educate themselves on OG Spongebob. Like, this one's just disappointing because Pressure is an iconic episode, but I'm rambling. Let's move over to episode number two and see what mistakes are in that episode. Next up is Patrick Man, and this episode's pretty good, but of course, I mean, it's in this video. It has a mistake, guys. Every episode of Spongebob pretty much has a mistake, but here's this episode's mistake. Let's see if you can catch it. Another Krabby Patty for the gentleman. Thank you. Let's hope Patrick Man doesn't come confiscate this one. Patrick is taking things too far. Hey, that's Patrick, man, dear. What are you doing out there? Something a non-hero civilian could never understand. No! Away with temptation! Swiftness! Villains and criminals, beware! Patrick, man! Did you catch it? Well, if you didn't, let me give you some context. This right here is Patrick Man, and as you can see, he has a backward P on his attire. It's a part of his outfit. It's there whenever we see Patrick in this outfit, but when he appears in this kitchen right here, um, where is the backwards P? It's gone. It's just disappeared. The animators just didn't draw it. First it's there, but in this one shot, I guess they just weren't feeling it. They weren't feeling it, and it's not there. So, yeah, mistake. Let's keep it moving, though, guys. I have another episode with more wild mistakes. Something tells me Mr. Wormsley is actually a Mrs. Wormsley. <gasps> oh, Patrick, it's a miracle. That it is. Next up is the season six episode, Pet or Pest. And this episode has three mistakes in it, so I'm just gonna get right into them. Here's the first mistake. Did you catch it on your own? Well, during this scene where this truck nearly like ends these worms, like these worms were about to be squished. If you look closely, there's no driver in the truck. Like this truck is moving and being driven, but there's no one in the driver's seat actually driving the truck. So this was a major mistake here. Like this was some laziness. And it doesn't end there for this episode. Here's the next mistake. 599, let's drink it where they last. These things are so cute. Enjoy your new home, little guy. That sure was a great idea you had, Mr. Krabs. Well, it's like they always say back in the old country, lad. What's that? I don't know. I've never been to the old country. This one is very, very, very easy to miss, and shout out to our editor, Josh, for finding it. But towards the ending of the episode, when SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs are selling the worms, one of SpongeBob's green holes turns red for less than a second. Again, it happens really fast, so I guess it's not that big of a deal, but I mean, SpongeBob's holes are not supposed to be red. And I mean, Spongebob, if they worry, I need to go talk to the doctor about that one because that's not very good. What also isn't very good, though, is the last mistake in this episode right here. Get ready, guys. This one is just embarrassing. Oh, well, at least I still have you guys. <laughs> hmm. 
What is it? It comes from a baby spotted glistening meadow worm, the rarest of its species. Like I said, this one is really bad. So when SpongeBob is throwing out the worms, we see this blue fish approach right here and smell it, right? And what's really important here is we hear his voice, okay? Remember, he's blue. This is him right here. And he also has slime on his finger. You can see it right here. But when the scene changes, this fish changes colors. Like I said, he was blue and you see him put the slime on his fingers, but now when it flips, he's now green. He has the slime on his fingers, that's how we know it's the same fish, and he also has the same voice. So yeah, this was a major mix-up here. First he was blue, we see him put the slime on his finger, but then when it switches, the slime is on the finger of a completely different fish, and they have the same voice. So I know I'm kind of over-explaining this one, just it's easy to kind of miss it, but yeah. This episode is full of mistakes, guys, and let's keep it moving over to another episode with more crazy mistakes. Construction workers are always hungry. Krabby Patties, get your red hot Krabby Patties. See you. Next up is the episode Food PBFFT Truck, a really, really good episode from season 13. This is one of my favorites. Here are some hilarious clips from the episode. Don't you want a Krabby Patty? I'd love one, but it's so far away. <laughs> That food truck stole me customer! Behold! The brand new, to me, food truck! You won't sell any patties from that old jalopy. You better sell a patty, or you better not come back! You're driving! Ooh, I can navigate! Okay, 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 it's time for the mistakes. It's mistake time. It's what you guys clicked on this video for. And during this one scene, take a look at this character, Incidental 45. Well, during this one shot, the animators messed up and drew Incidental 45 two times. He's right here at the dining table with Incidental 42, but then there's another one waiting in order to get money to Squidward. Now look, Incidental duplications did happen a lot in earlier seasons of the show, like season one, two, or three. It may Makes sense, but in modern SpongeBob, this never happens and is totally a mistake. And guys, there's one more mistake I want to show you guys today. Keep those eyes peeled. There are so many customers here. Maybe the Rock Bottom Mall? Where is everybody? The circus should be good for crowds. Maybe it's a flea circus. <laughs> Yeah. It's still warm. So as you just saw, when SpongeBob and Squidward are driving around in Rock Bottom, which is so cool by the way, seeing Rock Bottom again, I love this place. But yeah, they're driving around and they pass this question mark store once, right? But the animators must have forgot about this and reused the background or something as they end up passing the store twice, which wouldn't have been possible. They passed it once. It should be behind them. It shouldn't reappear again in front of them. So yeah, another mistake. One, two, three. Darn it! I'll get you next time. One, two, three. Darn it! One, two, three. Darn it! Let's keep it going with SpongeBob season six. You know, it isn't the best season, but what I can say for sure is a lot of season six episodes have mistakes. I don't know what was going on, if the animators got lazy in season six, but we're gonna be talking about pineapple fever. Here is the first mistake. Did somebody say something to eat? <laughs> My food! Your food? <laughs> Is this really what we've come to? Hey, did you hear that? Oh, it's just Patrick gnawing on his can. So take a look at this can that Patrick is chewing on, okay? When Patrick first gets the can, it has a yellow label, as you can see right here. I'm zooming in on it, I'm circling it. As you can see, and remember guys, that label is yellow. But when SpongeBob says that the noise was Patrick chewing on the can, it now has a red label. Like what? How did it change randomly? First it was yellow, then halfway through it changes to red. And it isn't a different can. I know this for sure, it's the same can. So the animators must have messed up and forgot that it was originally yellow. Mistakes happen, and here's another mistake in this episode. 
have an even better idea. It's a game called Boundaries. It's very simple. The object of the game is to see how long everyone can leave Squidward alone. He will stay inside boundaries he defines with chalk lines on the floor. Did you catch it? Well, if you did, I'm impressed because this one is easy to miss. But when SpongeBob looks at the chalk Squidward threw down, his lower lip is black when it's supposed to be red. I'm zooming in here and yeah, his lower lip is black. SpongeBob, man, you need to go have a shower or something. I don't know how your bottom lip is black. That is gnarly, dude. But yeah, two mistakes in this one episode, guys. Jeez. Let's keep it moving though and head over to another episode. Stay tuned, guys, because I'm saving some of the craziest mistakes for last and you don't want to miss them. First up is the very, very, very iconic episode, Pizza Delivery. Like, this episode is so good and gives me so many memories. Basically, SpongeBob and Squidward are sent on a mission by Mr. Krabs to deliver a pizza, even though the Krusty Krab is like a burger place. Uh, here's some clips from the episode. They are hilarious. <laughs> Dude, dude, now I really want pizza. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I would totally have a slice of a crusty crab pizza, even though it's made out of Krabby Patties, as you can see in this clip. But anyways, let's get into this episode's first mistake, and let's see if you guys can spot it on your own. Here's some clips. We don't deliver, but you do. Antenna, check. Bumper, check. Bumper, sticker. Check. Okay, so here's what's going on here. When SpongeBob checks the tire pressure on one of the car's tires, the hubcap disappears. Originally, there is a hubcap, as you can see in this shot, but during that one scene, the hubcap is just gone, making for a weird continuity error. And there's more. Here's mistake number two. Keep those eyes peeled. Front end. Check. Antenna. Check. Bumper. Check. Bumper. Sticker! Check! Back it up! Give me the wheels, my fuck! Give me the wheels! Backing up! Backing up! Backing up! Backing up! Well, you backed up. And you know what else? We're in the middle of nowhere! Okay, so the delivery boat, as you can see, is white and purple on the sides and front, but the rear has a classic red stripe. Well, it starts out as red, but when the boat is spinning down the road during this scene, it has a purple tint, but to make matters even worse, it actually turns entirely purple when it breaks down. At first, the stripe is red, as you can see in this shot, but then it just randomly turns purple. I guess the animators forgot about it being red, but anyways, let's move over to episode number two, which has even more mistakes. Let's do it. Up next is an episode with a very intriguing name, the Krabby Patty that ate Bikini Bottom. Sounds like a horror movie. In this episode, a Krabby Patty grows too large after Sandy adds one of Sandy's scientific ingredients to it. It's a very interesting plot. I personally like this episode, here are some clips summarizing it. This is the result of an experimental growth serum I developed. It could easily feed a lot of hungry people. Oh, or supply an entire fast food restaurant lowering its operating cost. Administer the growth serum. <laughs> there. So, uh, how big is this thing supposed to get? Hey, who cares? It's an endless supply of free patties. <laughs> Easy, boy. Easy. 
Yeah, Mr. Krabs, you are crazy, dude. Like, you risked everything. You risked so many people's lives just to potentially make more money with your stupid Krabby Patties. But anyways, what's also stupid in this episode is the mistakes. There's a couple of them. Let's see if you guys can spot the first one without my help. Did I already show you my single-wheeled roller skates or my helicopter that's powered by coconut milk? Actually, I'm not really interested in all that. Well, is there something in particular you wanted to see? Tell me about your giant soybean. This is the result of an experimental growth serum I developed. I sure would hate to see it fall into the wrong hands. Someone who might just use it to try to get... Rich, can I borrow your telephone? It's ringing. Ah, Mr. Krabs, I came as soon as I got the call. Uh, did you bring a Krabby Patty like I was planning to ask you to do? Aye, aye, Captain. Perfect! So here's the thing. Sandy's tree dome, right? The inside of it, there's no water. There's no water at all. We kind of talked about it in the last episode, right? No water. So there should be no bubbles inside her tree dome, right? Well, in Sandy's tree dome in this episode, bubbles appear during motion as if it's underwater. Take a look at some of these shots. Normally when SpongeBob characters are underwater and they move around, there'll be little bubble animations, right? But inside Sandy's tree dome, that should not happen. But during this occasion, where Mr. Krabs puts the phone down. Look, look, why are there bubble animations? It also happens when he picks it up. Look, there's bubble animations again, so. Let's book him! Whoa, you guys are good! Let's throw peanuts at him and see how he likes it! I get what I deserve! Ouch! Let's kick things off with a classic, the smoking peanut from season two. There is a spicy mistake in this episode. Hey Patrick, what are you doing? I'm just continuing my investigation of the great Clamu caper. Have you found out anything? Yes. No, wait, uh, no. <laughs> Don't worry, SpongeBob, Patrick's on the case. The truth will be revealed. I'd better go see Sandy. She'll know what to do. What kind of inconsiderate person would upset such a gentle creature? This first mistake is really bad, as well Spongebob is running to Sandy's tree dome and says, I'll ask Sandy, she'll know what to do. A bubble transition starts as it always does, but if you look closely, a blue card from Rough Draft Korea can be seen for a split second. Now I'm sure some of you guys are wondering what is going on here, but Rough Draft Korea is actually where Spongebob is animated, where like the 2D animation of the show is actually done, so this was a major mistake. This shouldn't be here. But hey, mistakes happen, and let's keep it going, guys, as this video is filled to the brim with crazy mistakes. Let's keep it moving. Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. It's so beautiful. First up is the episode Choir Boys, which has some wild mistakes. Roll the clips. Here's the first one. Looks like a forlorn SpongeBob lying sprawled across the dirt. Oh, what a lovely day for me! <laughs> huh? Squidward, my playmate Patrick is away. I am desperate for something to do and someone to play with. Well, I've got no time for the likes of you. This one's just really funny, like it makes me laugh, but when Spongebob lays on the ground and puts his hand on Squidward near the beginning of the episode, um, Spongebob's hand can be seen going through Squidward's tentacles. It clips through it, which is a major animation mistake. This is probably more of an animation glitch. I don't think the animators did it intentionally, but look at that, I'm zooming in on it. That is a mistake, and there's more. Here's the next one. Roll the clip. Figaro! 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 Stop! 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 stop. I hereby issue you this ticket for reckless frowning and failing to listen to my song. So long, Mio. SpongeBob, I will be late to practice with all of your tomfoolery slowing me down. Did you catch it? As when Squidward rips off SpongeBob's fake mustache, just saying SpongeBob looks pretty cool with a mustache. He should consider growing one out. <laughs> but when Squidward rips it off, the latter's right arm is missing for a bit. That arm is gone. Look at it. It's missing. It's disappeared. Talk about a mistake, guys. Let's keep it moving, though, and head over to another mistake. That is some unbelievable mistakes that you've never seen before, so stay tuned. As you guys know, Squidward 
Squidward is a very depressed character. And you know, I kind of get it. Squidward is very grumpy and he can be kind of rude, but he's also very misunderstood. No one acknowledges what Squidward's good at in life. And I kind of get it. Everyone just roasts him and is mean. It's his own fault, but anyways. Our next episode is Are You Happy Now? And this episode is all about SpongeBob trying to help Squidward find a happy moment in life. It's kind of sad. Here's some clips. What's your happiest memory, Squidward? Um, let me think. <sighs> I guess I don't have a happiest memory. Oh, well. You don't have a happiest memory? So what? How can you live without a happiest memory? You're right, SpongeBob. I don't have a happiest memory. This is horrible. Don't worry, Squidward. I'll help you make a happiest memory. Like I said, this episode's really sad. Like, Squidward just literally doesn't have a happy memory. But thank goodness for SpongeBob actually trying to be his friend. But anyways, let's get into the mistakes. This episode has two. Here's the first one. I want to see if you guys can find it without me assisting you. Keep those eyes peeled. Hi, uh, I'd like to order a Krabby Patty, please. <laughs> okay, can someone else take my order? This is horrible. Don't worry, Squidward. I'll help you make a happiest memory. You love music, right, Squidward? Mm -hmm. Then this'll definitely be your happiest memory. Oops, that was a sour note. This is not my happiest memory. This one is pretty bad, as when SpongeBob says, oops, that was a sour note. Incidental 104, who is sitting right behind him, is missing her shirt. This is a kid show, so the fact that she's literally just sitting there without a shirt on is very inappropriate. Like, this was a bad, how do you even make this mistake? Seriously, like, how did the animators forgot to give her a shirt, but still drew her, you know? Anyways, let's move on to mistake number two. <laughs> Let me see that. The Krusty Krab work schedule? What's so great about this? It's my happy book. The Krusty Krab is where all of my happiest memories occurred. Oops, I accidentally burned up your memories. Don't worry, Squidward. I have a whole cabinet of backups. This one isn't that big of a deal, I guess. But as you can see in this shot, Squidward drops the work schedule book on the grill and it just burns immediately. Like it's looking very crispy. But what about this scene when it's lying on the grill while SpongeBob is reading it? Why doesn't it burn? It's just a weird continuity error. When Squidward puts it down, it burns, right? It's flammable. But when SpongeBob's reading it, nothing happens to it. So just some weird decisions in this episode for sure. Let's move over to our final episode of today. It's really bad. Be prepared. When I get through with you, your own ringmaster won't recognize you. This next mistake happens very fast. It can be found in the episode, Don't Feed the Clowns, so I'm just gonna get right into it. Keep those eyes peeled! <laughs> Here's your stool! Here's your stamper! So during these business building scenes, we see the character R.A. Penny Pincher a bunch of times. He's just there within the business building. But during this one scene, the animators must have been feeling lazy or something. I don't know what was going on as Penny Pincher is replaced with another incidental 41. Kind of weird. I know this might not seem like that big of a mistake, but it is a mistake. So it's, it's very strange. Let's keep it moving though and head over to another episode. This one, guys, be prepared. Be prepared. It's going to be a wild mistake. First up is the episode Arbor Day Disarray, which is a new episode from season 13. This episode only aired in June, so yeah, it's very new and it has some mistakes. Here's the first one. Let's see if you guys can catch it. I use the power of science to make special acorns that'll grow into saltwater trees. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Happy, well-rounded 
a tree, you need to talk to him. Hi, I'm SpongeBob. This one is easy to catch because it's a very blatant mistake, like the animators, I don't know how they missed this one, but take a look at Squidward's face. Yeah, not only is this drumster missing his eyebrows, but he's also missing his forehead wrinkles. Normally Squidward looks like this, as most of you guys know, but in this one shot, I guess the animators were feeling a little lazy because, yeah, Squidward's face is missing some detail. But let's keep it moving, there's another mistake in this episode, I want you guys to catch it. A little while later. Hello, Sandy. Oh, howdy, SpongeBob. How's your new tree doing? Are you talking to it? My tree's been doing all the talking. Are you feeling okay, SpongeBob? Hang on. Barky wants to talk to you. Why did you leave me with this giggling hunk of holes? <laughs> yeah, what is that horrible noise? What? It's okay, buddy. Talent isn't everything. Huh. Your case? It's nothing. Hey, Squidward. Your barber called. He said he saw me. Should have stayed. This one isn't that big of a deal because it is a cartoon, guys. Like, Spongebob has a lot of mistakes, but sometimes I am self-aware of the fact that it's due to it being a kid's cartoon. But, um, where is Patrick's house, guys, in this one shot right here? It should be right beside Squidward's, but it's missing. This right here is Conch Street, and as you can see, we got Spongebob, Squidward, and Patrick's house all on one street. But in this one shot, I guess the animators were feeling, again, kinda lazy, and just thought it would be easy not to draw Patrick's house. House, right? But again, it's a cartoon, not a big deal, but let's keep it going, guys, because this next episode has a crazy mistake. Is him. Aren't you the esteemed Squilliam Fancyson the Third? No, I am not. Well, that's too bad. If you were Squilliam Fancyson, I would offer you your very own music class. My very own music class. First up is the season six episode, Professor Squidward, which to be honest with you guys, is not the best episode. You know, the plot is kind of cool because we get to see Squilliam, but not the best episode. What it does have though, is this mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it grand? What is? He's such a great musician. All right, I've had enough. Bunch of nonsense. So this character right here is known as Incidental F9. And as you can see, she's wearing this dress. It looks very good. She looks very pretty. But seconds later after that shot I just showed you, when we hear Fred say, isn't it grand? Um, Incidental F9's dress is missing. Her dress is just gone. And I highly doubt Shorty took her dress off in the middle of like, what? Where's her dress? Where'd it go? That's not it for this episode, guys. I have another mistake. This one though, you really need to pay attention to. Would you two income poops cut it out? All right, my guy. Hello, we're with the local Bikini Bottom News Channel. <gasps> I'm getting out of here. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna get my tuition back. Wow! <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> like I said, this one's kind of complicated, guys. So listen closely. So during this scene where Patrick rides his locomotive into the trash can, we can see Squidward exit the building from this door right here, this door, and it leads to outside where he places the trash can, right? This door right here leads to outside, remember. But later on in this episode, this completely changes. It's like the animators forget because when both news crews and the police come into Squidward's classroom, they enter the same door that Squidward took to go outside, but now it leads to a hallway. Before it led to here, outside, now it leads to a hallway. So a bit of a continuity error here. I don't know what's going on, but let's keep the video going, guys, and head over to another crazy episode with tons of mistakes. Don't click off. Here's another crazy mistake for you guys. It happens very quickly in the episode, The Two Faces of Squidward. I love this episode. He turns into handsome Squidward, but enough about handsome squids or handsome sea creatures. Here's the mistake. Who's 
Excuse me for just a second. Do you mind? I'm trying to work at a fast food restaurant. You might want to try it sometime. I sure would, Squidward. That sounds... Hey, wait a minute. SpongeBob, you already do work at a fast food restaurant. So, when SpongeBob and Patrick are in the kitchen, as you can see, the end condiments on this shelf right here, the end condiments are ketchup and mayonnaise. Okay, it goes ketchup and mayonnaise. You can see it right here, remember. But in the next few scenes, this completely changes. And now it's mustard, then ketchup. First it was ketchup, then mayo. Now it's mustard, then ketchup. I guess they could have changed the order, but considering this all happens in a matter of seconds, this was definitely a mistake, guys. And it's kind of a bad one. But hey, let's keep it moving over to another episode full to the brim with mistakes. Next up is the episode House Sitting for Sandy. This is a really good one. It's basically all about Sandy making the terrible decision of letting Spongebob and Patrick watch her tree dome and just, yeah, as you can imagine, Spongebob and Patrick are not the most responsible people or sponge and starfish. So yeah, it doesn't go very well. Here's some clips. Now pay attention as I clue you in on some of your more elaborate responsibilities. And this is the robot warehouse. It's where I keep all my robots. All you gotta do is come in here and count every single one of these robots and make sure none of them's gone missing. Patrick, no! You you promised me you weren't gonna touch anything. Well, now that that's settled, let's see where I can... Yes, Patrick. Uh, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Patrick, how many times do we... Yeah, this episode is crazy. Like, at one point, they accidentally activate a bunch of Sandy's robots and just, yeah, havoc ensues. But anyways, we're here for mistakes, guys. Some spicy mistakes that you missed. I'm sure you guys missed this one. Keep those eyes peeled. It's not as bad as it seems. Oh, yeah? What made you say that? <laughs> Not everything's broken. <gasps> Sandy! How was the inventor's convention? Funny y'all should ask that. I brought home something real handy. <laughs> Eureka! It works! Okay, so this first mistake is very complicated. So listen closely, guys. Like, listen carefully, all right? When Sandy aims the rubble reversal ray, SpongeBob is holding the beaker, as you can see right here, right? When Sandy fires it and SpongeBob and Patrick scream before the beam goes over them, SpongeBob is now not holding the beaker. I mean, I don't know how he just put it down. But then, when the tree dome is fixed, um, why does SpongeBob yet again have the beaker again? It's like a weird continuity error. First he has it, then he doesn't have it, then he has it again. I am nitpicking picking, but this is technically like a continuity error, and it's kind of a weird one. Moving from good old-fashioned Spongebob to the Patrick Star Show, our next episode is called The Prehistoric Patrick Star Show. It's kind of like a spin-off episode where they go back in time. It's interesting. Here's some clips. I think it's personally a really good episode. Oh, hush up, will ya? I'll get you some food. <laughs> food? <laughs> Plants, not food! Finally, food! Food? What do you mean, food? I'm doing my laundry! See, like I said, it's actually pretty good. I feel like the Patrick Star show gets way too much criticism, guys. Like, the show isn't perfect, but it is a good show. It has some funny moments. But anyways, what we're here to talk about isn't funny moments. We're here to talk about mistakes. It's why you clicked on the video. So here's the first mistake from this episode. Let's see if you guys can spot it without my help. Me, Patrick, Cave Star, and me live with Cave Parents. This became Dad. This me came off! Hi! This me came! And 
This! This became show! Were you able to catch it? Well, when Patrick Cavestar introduces his show at the end of the theme song, part of his outfit changes and gains an extra spot. At first, the outfit looks like this, and it's pretty consistent throughout the episode. But during this one part at the end of the theme song, his outfit is looking weird, man, and it has this extra spot here, which I guess isn't that big of a deal, but it's still a continuity error. And this episode has two. Here's the next one. Let's see if you guys can find it without me helping you guys. I hate spicy food. Huh? Huh? Dinosaur milk ice cream. Oh! Now it's time for sneak attack. Hey! Got me ice cream! This one happens fast, but when Patrick Cavestar finds a prehistoric version of Walter the Waiter selling dinosaur milk ice cream, this is a really cool reference because it's the same dude from the first SpongeBob movie from Goofy Goobers. He makes these Sundays, as you can see right here. But anyways, when Patrick Cavestar finds him, um, Patrick's brown beard is just missing. It's just they forgot to draw it during this one scene, and it's, it's pretty funny. But let's keep the video going, guys, and head back over to SpongeBob. This next episode is hilarious. The two front row seats, but you and a friend will go backstage to meet Kelpie G himself. Me and a friend. Oh, can you believe it? We're going to meet your hero. So nice to be surrounded by such kindred spirits. Who's ready for a Kelpie G concert tonight? Was it you who brought the raucous miscreant? Me? No, of course not, no. It's very easy to miss, but here's the thing. When SpongeBob and Squidward are at the Kelpie G concert, they are the only ones with backstage passes, even though everyone else should also have a backstage pass, right? Like, this was such a main plot point in the episode. Why don't all of these other Squidward-looking head dudes have their own backstage passes? So, yeah, weird mistake. And last but not least is the episode Don't Wake Patrick. This episode is all about Patrick sleepwalking and just, yeah, here. I'll let these clips summarize what happens in this episode. Pay attention because it's really good. Huh. I don't remember making such a mess. And I'm pretty sure I didn't eat spaghetti. Huh? Okay, 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 it's time for mistakes, guys. There is one really bad mistake in this episode. Keep those eyes peeled, watch closely. So this one is very easy to miss, but during the scene where Patrick is sleepwalking through traffic, like I have no idea how this man didn't get hit by a car, well, take a look at these incidentals, because none of them were drawn with pupils. You can see they have their eyes, but there's no pupils, and guys, I'm sorry, but that's a mistake. Well, that's going to do it for today's video, but really quickly, don't click off yet, guys. If you're new and you want to talk to me, Cartoon Cory, make sure to subscribe as I respond to the comments of all subscribers. So if you click subscribe right now and leave a comment, I'll respond for sure within the next two or three days. So click subscribe, do it, and leave that comment right now if you want to talk to me. Also, if if you guys are looking for more SpongeBob content, click this video right here, which has some of the craziest mistakes we've ever covered, guys. This video has tons of mistakes, so go and click it. I'll see you guys over on that video.